Hi, and welcome to Lois and Morgana Davidson Art. It's Lois here today, and as you know, I love painting trees. Um, I think my love of trees and the countryside, woodlands and forests was one of the things that first got me into landscape painting. Um, but they're not the easiest of things to paint, so I like to sort of practice them regularly, trying to sort of get them looking natural and not overworked. Um, so today I'll be painting this beautiful misty sunrise woodland scene. I'm using a reference photograph that I found on Pixabay and as usual I won't be slavishly copying it but trying to get the impression of it, just trying to paint my interpretation of it, simplifying the photograph and um, enhancing the areas that I like, changing a few bits around but using the general idea and atmosphere of the um, photograph as inspiration and I shall put a link to the Pixabay photograph in the description down below along with further information if you're interested. The photograph itself was taken in the early morning so depicts um, a sunrise but I'm trying to focus on turning mine into a sunset and you can see that I've got that lovely orange glow um, across the sky um, in the clearing on the right as the focal point which is about a third in from the side so it's following the compositional rule of thirds um, to give us this um, lovely uh, sunset glow that infuses the whole painting with reflected light. Here's the photograph that I've used. The first thing I did was to simplify it and sketch it out on my paper very loosely, just positioning where I want my trees and where I want my clearing and my sunset glow. And here's my very simple line work. You could pause the video and copy that if you want to paint along with me um, or just watch and um, see my method and then sort of apply the same method to one of your own photographs or a scene of your own choosing. So I'm using my one and a half inch Princeton Acrylite Mottler brush to wet the page all over. Um, so I'm going to be painting wet in wet. I'm going to mix up my sunset glow first. So this is burnt sienna and raw sienna. And I'm going to um, just loosely brush that into the area that I want to um, have a fairly sort of intense um, amount of this sunny orange glowing light. So in the sky all around that area, bringing it down into the landscape for reflected light. I think I want it to be a little bit stronger there so that because watercolour will always dry back about 30% lighter. So I don't want it to be too light. Then while the paper's wet, because um, my room's quite warm today, my studio, so the paper's drying quite quickly, um, I want to get my sky colour in now. So I've washed my brush out and I'm putting a bit of cobalt blue and a little bit of ultramarine blue into that same sunset mixture of burnt sienna and raw sienna and I'm mixing up a sky colour. I want a blue but I want it fairly dark, fairly subdued um, so that it gives me that twilight sunset feel rather than it being a clear bright blue. And then working quickly, dabbing any excess water off onto a paper towel or a paper tissue um, so it's not too wet and then dipping, um, refilling my brush um, with this lovely blue grey colour, working around the sunset glow. Today my paper is Saunders Waterford cold press paper. Um, it's 11 inches by 15 inches or 28 centimetres by 38 centimetres. Um, it's 140 pounds weight um, or 300 GSM. It's taped to my board with ordinary decorators masking tape. And as you can see, it's beginning to buckle or cockle a little bit as um, the paper expands when it's wet. But because it's taped to the board and it's a quality cotton paper, as it dries naturally, uh, once I've finished painting, it will flatten out beautifully again. So you can see that as I've mixed the colour with a bit more burnt sienna, I'm getting these greyer colours. So I've got this nice grey across the horizon now uh, for my sort of, just the impression of my distant hill, which is just going to be visible peeping through the trees. 
And now I've changed brushes. Um, I've changed to a number 14 round brush. This is a Perla, uh, rather an Escoda Perla synthetic brush. And I'm using that same gray color um, just to sort of roughly get in um, the largest masses of my trees over on the right. These should then just soften and diffuse into my sky wash and give me a nice base for my trees. Remember, we're trying to paint an impression here, so I'm just trying to sort of get as much as I can into the first wash. Some of these tree canopies over on the left as well, in the centre of the painting, just coming over a little bit further into the left. As I say, this will soften and diffuse, and then I can just get some, start to get some, some fine, thin tree trunks in, following my sketch, my pencil sketch. My board is at an angle of 45 degrees. Um, it doesn't have to be raised quite as high as that, but you do want to have a bit of a slope to your board when you're painting wet in wet. This means that gravity will help you paint and your diffusions and the flow of paint and water um, will sort of flow down the page and keep things sort of moving and soft and lovely. And using that same grey, you saw that I've put across a line of distant hills and I'm now putting in mid-ground uh, bushes and shrubs out of which my trees will grow. Now mixing up a green, and this green that I've mixed is from a little bit of cad yellow and a little bit of cobalt blue, maybe a bit of ultramarine blue, and I'm just washing that really lightly across the foreground to start with. I don't want the foreground to draw too much attention. Um, it's just really going to be just a sort of tangle of um, undergrowth that you can barely see in the um, twilight. But I need to just get a little bit of colour in there first. So this is now just some burnt sienna, just lightly brushed into the green, just to get some texture going. I'm going to be sprinkling a bit of salt in the foreground a bit later. And now I'm quickly working um, just to build up a little bit more, um, a few more washes into the trees, just some darker washes of ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. So I get some slightly darker shadows, softly diffusing into the trees, making sure there's plenty of gaps. So I'm using my, the tip of my brush just to paint these sort of calligraphic dancing marks across the page. You can see they're softening and diffusing. And now I can use a fairly dry mix, uh, but still quite pale of my grey, to, and the tip of my brush to paint in my tree trunks. These will soften and diffuse, but they should give me a nice base for my trees. See, I'm being fairly careful to keep the lines nice and thin so my trees end up looking fairly elegant. I hope you can see how nicely they are softening back, but still holding their own. And then just a bit more tone across my foreground, um, using the grey colour, running it into the burnt sienna colour across the green. Still keeping everything fairly dull, fairly muted, so I've got that evening light. Now just running up with a slightly darker grey at the base of the tree trunks so that I get them nice and dark. It will soften back a bit more. But just want to get them sort of um, standing out a little bit more against the undergrowth and against the background hills and sky. And just before everything dries, I'm going to use the corner of a plastic store card, a flexible card. You could use um, your fingernail, a palette knife or the end of a paintbrush. 
and I'm just going to draw some pale marks through the damp paint and that will just give me a hint of a few branches um, and trunks. Um, I'm going to try a little bit on this uh, mid-ground birch, this largest birch tree, see if I can take some light out on the light side um, on the left of the tree trunk. Um, it looks a little bit odd at the moment, I think, but I'm hoping that I can then turn that into the typical birch bark. If not, I will be able to cover it over later. Now, this is just a small sprinkle of fine sea salt into the foreground, making sure it doesn't go up into the rest of the painting. And hopefully the salt will cause little tiny blossoms and tiny runbacks that will resemble flowers and plants um, in the foreground then I can just use the corner of a cut piece of store card. Again, you could use a palette knife just to pull some grass marks through the foreground, uh, just to add a bit more texture into the foreground so that it sort of leads up towards that sunset glow. So most of my grass marks are sort of tending up and leaning in towards the focal point. Um, that's another device, sort of subtle way that you can lead people to where you want them to look in the painting. So now I'm going to have a cup of coffee and walk away from the painting so that I don't fiddle with it and overwork it and let it dry completely. And um, please note that I've laid my board reasonably flat. It's at quite a narrow angle. This is so that the salt will stay in little round shapes and so that my painting won't run any further wet in wet. And here it is completely dry. I've raised it back up to 45 degrees, which is my preferred angle for painting. And I'm going to be finishing the painting off um, using the wet paint on dry painting method, the wet on dry. And I've mixed up more of my lovely dark from ultramarine, cobalt blue and burnt sienna. Um, and you can see how lovely this dark is and I can work it in into the deep shadows of this um, main dark tree over on the right. Negatively painting around trunks and branches as I go, um, just to suggest them in the dim light. So the underpainting will show through where I paint around it and will give me that sort of a bit more interest in my trees rather than just painting dark trunks over the lighter first wash. You could use Payne's Grey or your dark of choice for this, but I think that using the colours that you've already used in the sky and the sunset to mix the dark, in other words, the blues and the burnt sienna, gives you a dark that's harmonious. Um, the colours really work well together because it's exactly the same colours, just mixed in a slightly different way. So then working some of those darks up through the canopy, and you can see how the sunset glow and the blue sky is still showing through these um, the canopies that we've put in. Now trying to build up on the shadow side of this tree. I don't want to paint too much over on this side. I want to leave it quite sort of ethereal and misty. I'll just be doing some dry brush a bit later, but trying to build up some sort of um, the texture of bark on this closer tree of the birch bark and I'm still not really convinced I mean I'll leave it to dry see how it looks I've got a feeling that I may well paint over that tree and turn it into a sort of something like an oak or an elm tree um, if the birch bark doesn't end up looking convincing I'm just darkening up my other trees you can see where the um, the under the underpainting is softly diffused. Um, I can now just strengthen up my trees, and that sort of soft um, diffusion of the underpainting helps to give them that sort of misty look, sort of slightly out of focus in the twilight. So 
So this stage is all about just trying to enhance what's already on the page um, with darks and a small amount of detail. And I've brushed the salt, um, any remaining salt off my painting. I forgot to say, um, usually um, the damp paint will dissolve most of the salt, but if there's any residue left once it's dry, then you can brush it off. And it's just giving me a nice sort of gentle texture in the foreground. As I say, it doesn't distract too much and just helps to lead the eye towards the sunset. And over on this side, I've added more burnt sienna to my dark mixture to make it a little bit redder so that um, I've got that sunset glow showing up in the bushes where there's more light and less, um, less foliage, less canopies. Again, carefully strengthening up my, um, my tree trunks from my mid-ground tree line. And then I'm going to mix up um, quite a dry mix of my dark paint. Not too dry, not too wet. And then I'm going to use the side of my brush and just scratch it over the texture of the paper and give myself um, some just very faint dry brush suggestions and impressions of canopies um, just quite light canopies over here on the left side just dragging it down the shape of my branches giving them just a little bit of cover not too much just enough to suggest the canopies over on this side I don't want to distract too much from um, everything over on the right around the sunset glow and the clearing Then just getting a little bit of dark in and around my salt textures in the foreground, um, bringing the painting together really, sort of linking up shapes and ideas and suggestions here. And then lastly, using my same dark, I'm using a Pro Art small sword liner to put in a few really nice dark but very fine branches. This is a nice brush for painting tree branches. It's got long flexible hairs that hold quite a lot of paint so you can do some nice long thin very fine brush strokes and they can look quite sort of free and spontaneous. You can also use any sort of brush with a fine point that holds enough paint. A rigger brush would be perfect too, any kind of lining brush. And now just a little bit of that burnt sienna glow across the grass in the foreground, just on the tops of the grasses, uh, just a very light glaze across the foreground. And that just takes the glow from the sky and across the whole of the background of the scene and then across into the foreground through the clearing, like a sort of a path through the painting. And after stepping back and having a good old look at the painting, I've decided that I'm not happy with that birch tree. For some reason, I haven't been able to get the textures right and it sort of doesn't sit well in the painting. So I'm going to cover over the attempts that I made at at, at um, texture and add a couple more sort of trunks and branches just to give the tree a shape that kind of fits in better with the composition sort of leaning the branches in a little bit and towards the sunset and the clearing again this sort of frames the sunset frames the light um, and helps to draw the eye into the painting and I think I'm much happier with the tree in this sort of shape 
I think it works a bit better. Um, I think I would have liked my birch if I'd been able to paint it properly, but for some reason it just didn't go well. So always be prepared to be a little bit flexible. Don't panic if things don't quite work out. There's usually ways in which you can slightly modify your painting or your idea um, so that it fits in better with your overall composition. And now going in with some more really darks, because each time the darks dry, they dry back a little bit lighter. So if they're not quite dark enough, you can just go in at the base where those are in deep shadows and just put a little bit more of this nice, strong dark. And then the same over on the right, just darkening up those mid-ground shrubs and bushes a little bit more. And they will lighten up a bit. I don't want them to be quite as dark as the shadows on the right. So as I say, that will lighten back as it dries. And that's it. I'm going to call that finish now and remove the tape. This will let us see it with a clean white border. And seeing it like this helps us to see it as if it was framed um, and with fresh eyes. And we can decide whether or not we need to make any slight adjustments to it. But I think I'm OK with that. I think it's worked quite well. Um, it's sort of got the look that I wanted. Um, I like the sunset glow and the way it infuses the entire painting. And I like the way that you can see the sky through the tree canopies and how they're quite sort of faint and impressionistic. Well, I hope that was helpful and I hope um, that watching these methods has encouraged you to have a go at something similar with one of your own photographs. Um, and I really hope you enjoy painting it as much as I did. So thank you very much for watching and supporting our channel. Morgana will be back with another beautiful painting. She's got a stormy sea painting coming on Monday, so keep an eye out for that. And um, please leave us a like and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. And thank you so much to everyone that supports us on Patreon. We really appreciate you. So I'll see you again soon. Have a nice weekend and happy painting. Bye.